You're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. Hey, Derek. You're great. Are we going to have nicknames for each other each episode? You're great. We should. You're great. Uh, I'm under boob. That's the original. That's the OG. So you're Nev so Nips. Great. I'm under boob. That's oh, wait. Really let's good. not give away the studio production value we have here. It's pretty, pretty low. We're <laughs> probably going to sing anyway, so we might as well just use it. That's a good point. I'm... And go. You're great. 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 So happy we're being great again together. We are being great again. It's Not been a real, real, been. real topsy turvy time. I suppose so. Yeah. Has traveling. It? I don't know. Oh yeah, sure. Traveling. Yes, yeah, so much traveling. Summertime. It's hot. Obligations. Already. Sure. Family. Yeah. My cat. Your cat. Mostly it, it is Delilah's fault, yeah. Welcome to the Hug Life Podcast. I am Monica Cat Hater Nevi. And I am Mike Obligated Coletta. <laughs> Obligated. <laughs> <laughs> Obligations is a funny thing, especially when Obligation. they're not. Obligation. All right. Well, Monica, let's just plug our shows up top. What do you got going on? Thursday, I'm in Ballard at Bickerson's Brewing. <clears throat> Friday, I'm in Bozeman, Montana at Last Best Comedy Club. Then I fly back that next day to do another show in Seattle, I think in Greenwood, for the Lady Bits show. Oh, they're doing a Lady Bits in town in yeah, Seattle? Yeah, yeah. And then nice. uh, and it pays more. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, And then next week, I'm in Kirkland, Washington at Side Hustle Tap Room. That's uh, we want to sell that one out. That would be helpful financially. So if you're in east side of Washington, east side of Seattle, whatever it's called, east side of the lake, come to that one. Then the next, you know, we get into June. Look at us getting into June. I have one show in Seattle, and then I'm in Redding, California, with Andrew Slater at the Redding Performing Arts Center. I love Andrew Slater. I know. And then we are both at. Uh, fuck, I don't remember what the casino is called, but it's in Corning, California the next night. And then more stuff in June, but my link tree is updated pretty well, and my website, monicanevy.com. And uh, we're building a new website, so that's exciting. Oh, you are? Nice. Yeah, well, mine's a piece of crap, and it has been, but I don't know what I'm doing, so well, another other person is doing it. Tips and tricks, let me know. Oh, you got someone doing it. Never mind, you don't need me. You're fine. Well, okay. I don't I yeah. shows. That would be fine. I should have had you build me one a long time ago, probably. But hey, you know, it's all good. It's too late now. I, I'm just being silly. Okay, <laughs> the 19th. I don't have a show. That's D and D. Okay, on the 21st. <laughs> just reading your calendar. On the 21st, I have. Uh, I'm actually just got booked on this. Good comedy at Bad Jimmy's. Let nice, one of my faves. It's a good time. I'm glad it's it'll be better time. weather for it, you. It was yeah, like it. windy and rainy and 47 when I was on stage last time. It was ridiculous yeah it'll be better for me i think weather wise I, I i've done it two or two times before at that location i love it it's a great show it's an awesome show the funny thing about it i never get booked on it in advance it's always like this and i'm like that's fine so yeah, i'm doing that pretty last minute too but yeah so that's on the 21st which is a sunday we got the secret show on june 2nd i bumped my microphone then we have on the 11th of june is the four horsemen brewery show those are back and this one's going to be a banger because it's susan rice and i'm super excited about it so i'm trying to plug that up and then i'm with you in yakima in the middle of june it's yeah sincere. we are yeah so i got it's kind of slowing it's a slow couple months for me like i don't have shows that often but I mean, i'm kind of like that sometimes. yeah summer is like that and also i am confident that much like good comedy at bad jimmy's it appears that my most of my bookings are never in advance now it's always like last minute shit and i'm like you just fine. accept it i guess yeah i'm just like whatever it's fine so that's my shows. Uh, other things you can do to support this podcast. You can, we have a Patreon. It's a dollar a month. You get access to all our Patreon episodes. It's patreon.com. Those are updated, even though we've been a little behind on these episodes now. Yeah, we, we decided Patreons to do May. On there. We just got to do May, and it's still May, so we're okay. Yeah, we're not behind on that. We're not behind. You're behind. Boom roasted. Okay. Yeah. The other thing you can do is you can use our Amazon link, which is going to be at huglifepodcast.com. There's an Amazon link there. I believe Monica also has a Amazon link maybe on her website right now. Maybe not if you're updating it. No, I'm sure we've taken it down, but. Okay. 
Well, you could do that also on uh, my personal website. I don't have an Amazon link. I'll put it on there. I haven't done that yet. I need to do that. Good, good reminder, everybody. Okay. But also another thing you can do at Hug Life Podcast on Instagram. And on top of that, you could just, you know how you could support us the most? If you just go to the secret show, that's huge for us. Sure. Right? That's like The secret show is great. Any of our live shows, if you're not in Seattle either, that's very helpful. Super duper helpful. Okay. And Danny Dodge does our art at Studio Dodge on Instagram, studiododge.com. There's all the plugs. We did it. Monica, yeah. do you want to just spend this episode? I want to call this a Washugal appreciation episode. How do you feel about it? <laughs> uh, yeah, that seems very Patreon esque, but let's do it anyway. So we'll be as nice as possible about it. I mean, it's, it's, it was so, it was Monica. Cameron and I doing a show in Washougal, right? So the Washougal, Gabba Green Washington is three is fourths like, complete. Yes, it's like twenty minutes from Portland, Oregon, though. So it's like down there. It's right on the river. And we just have to assume not everybody lives in Washington, you know? Yeah, it was. It, we, they don't statistically. I can see where people live. Yeah, Sorry, exactly. everybody. <laughs> so the other thing about this too is yeah. it's kind of a haul for the show, right? It's it's kind of a haul for a one off show, two and a half hour drive, right? Well, yeah, and to not be staying there, which we didn't plan to do because the next day was Mother's Day. That's right. And we all have mothers. We have stuff to do, you know, so that's the way it works. Two of us have children. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, I guess, apt to. to We all have mothers. mothers. (laughs) We all have mothers in our lives, whether they're our mothers or our spouses who are mothers. That kind of works. Yeah, that works. I didn't get anything. I didn't get Katie anything for Mother's Day for Delilah. Although I think that's weird, so I'm not going to do that. That's that's oh, weird. Did Delilah get her anything? Nope, she didn't get jack shit. She just screamed a lot, which is par for the course. So we go to this show. It's at Los Compadres Two, which Los that's Dos right. It's Compadres. a sequel. There's two of them. There's two of them. That's so this right. This is the second of two compadres, two friends. Two friends. So there's four friends total. I guess, yeah little multiplication humor and we get there and it it doesn't it doesn't look great it, it looks kind of it looks kind of well they wanted to cancel the show you said which was already a weird right problem. i had received an email on like wednesday and this show was on saturday uh that we might not do it because they didn't sell very many tickets because the weather was going to be nice right which happens this said that's a northwest thing when the weather is nice nobody wants to go inside i think other places it's not as like if if the place is hot normally it's not as bad because people are like used to just living normal lives and wanting to go in the air conditioning or whatever that's not how we do it in the northwest yeah that's not it that's not it we go outside but but the next morning i received a email that said no we're we're still gonna do it we're still on which is good because i already had one show cancel last week that i went to and it just didn't do it which is kind of a bummer i will say in uh you know kudos to them they were going to pay us regardless yeah which is nice no that honestly the the tldr of this is i actually had a good time on the show even though it was lightly attended i still had fun and it seemed like you had fun based entirely on your set you enjoyed yourself (laughs) um it was fine i was i kept laughing at them because it was just they were paying attention. They were doing that thing where they're paying attention. They're drunk, though. And so when they like a joke, they break off into conversation about that joke. Yes, yeah, true. But yeah, we only had right. like, I mean, there was probably 12 people there. Yeah. By the end, because right. like two more tables came in when I was on stage. So there might have been like 18, but it was not a ton. So if people, one table starts talking about something, then we've lost the room, you know? <laughs> So I kind of yeah. kept laughing at that. I mean, I was having fun. And of course, it divulged into me just talking to them about their hot tubs or whatever. Yeah, we got offered to go to hot tubs, which I'm not into. But we you did. know, that, that, happens. that happens. A little aggressive eventually. A little, but... Really aggro about it and really weird. You know, real, real aggro and weird. Yeah, drugs and hot tubs were offered. Drugs and tubs. <laughs> did I just think of the title of this podcast? It sure did. Tubs. Yep, there it is. There it is. That's where it's at. Well, I, the, the the other point I wanted to make is how much fun it was just hanging out with you and Cameron on a road trip. Yeah, it was fun. It was nice to have the crew together again. And we got food. We got Mexican food. That was pretty good. Oh, those good. fajitas were and solid. And Stefan, the server and bartender, was very nice and very attentive. 
and overall it was a, it was ah, that's the thing like yeah that's not ideal and I'm just in this spot in my career where both me and producers want me to draw more than I do <laughs> yeah that's like a, I'm I mean, still we all, not we all liked enough for people to be that. like you know what I won't stay out on the river and we'll go and see this person who I know who they are it's it's not worth leaving the river yet you know Okay. Fine. The plight of a stand-up comedian is when well, you get to a certain point where the only way to progress is to have people want to pay to see you based on other things that you do that are not stand-up comedy related most of the time. Yeah, that's a lot of it, I guess. But yeah. People want you to be a TikTok star or a radio DJ. Would you be a radio DJ? Have you considered that? Have you considered I have considered it many times, but no. I don't know. It doesn't seem fulfilling, but also I feel like it corners you into wherever you're specifically. But think about how many Bud Light DJ. Platinums you could give away. Or, or, I mean, or that weird, is weird, my, obscure brands. That is my goal. That's your goal in give life. Away to, give away any type of Bud Light. Doesn't any matter. Bud, Bud Light. Light, Platinum, Seltzer, Lime. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I actually like the lime. I like lime. Bud Light limes a lot, actually. I know it's that fake lime flavor, but I'm here for it. Well, and of all the, because they did that for a while, that was like a thing where, like, then everybody started to have a lime version and there was like orange versions and stuff. The only one that really prospered and is still around is the old Bud Light lime there. There you go. That's good. That's yeah. good stuff. Anyway, like, so that's the goal. And that's and not that's where the I'm at yet. podcast, The History of Bud Light I'm Lime. I'm not giving away Bud Lights yet. Yes. Um, but so that's just, yeah, I get it. They were, it's this odd thing when there's this communication where they're disappointed in the fact that tickets haven't been sold, where they're not, they're, um, they're not trying to blame you, but they're also kind of being like, hey, you suck and you're like yeah they said that's the so first time they you. hadn't sold out a show in probably a, bi- a billion time. times a billion times they said that to us though they mentioned it yeah. like they kept mentioning it to the point where i was like we get it i think she felt bad about it and that was fine but that was the one before that hadn't sold out either and she said it was probably because of the weather as well and that's she true. was very adamant that the the other headliner was like so great and she didn't understand why people didn't come to see him. However, both Mike and I were like, I've never heard of that guy. So I don't know. It was so funny when you're like listening to someone talk about someone else. And I was looking at you and I was like, does Monica know who this person is? And then she walks away and I'm like, who the fuck is that guy? And you're like, I, I like, have looked no up idea. his picture because I thought I knew who it was. And even the person that I thought wasn't like, you know, somebody astonishing and so when i looked it up i was like oh i definitely don't even know who this guy is so not that it not and you know most people look at my picture and don't know who i am but it's it was just weird that she felt like everyone else was wrong and they should know him but i don't know who he is yeah it's 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 one of those things where it was a very it was a fun sh- like i had a fun time with you and cameron yeah but i but i was definitely of the mindset that man this could have could have lot and we also I didn't sell any merch because I only have XL shirts left, which was kind of rough. One shirt, but yeah, I okay. So this is I do think that true bonding happens in adversity, and not saying mm-hmm. that this was the most adverse thing we've done, but you I feel do like think Cameron and I are all closer now as people. Yeah, definitely. Maybe not because of this one specifically, but because of plenty of other weird shit that we've done. Oh, my God. That's the thing I was trying to it, we were trying to get across to the booker is that Monica and <laughs> I in our, in our long time. Yeah, it's it's been so much worse. It's it's it, it's so much worse than this. And this is fine. Yeah. And it was fun. Now, did I even watch the videotape of the show? No, of course not. And I I'm, know. Like, Once you said it up, after we got it. there and you still set it up, I was like, I don't know what you're doing, but all right. I know. I, I do. My set. I almost left it on for yours, and I was like, I don't know if she well, wants it. I should have no. just left it on. No, but with that stuff, I guess you're like, well, there could be some weird crowd work thing, right? But it's like, it still sounds weird because there's just not that many people there. So even if it is good crowd work, it's like, sounds like. You're not doing that well because no one's there. Yeah. So it's weird when you get videos posted online and you know, you had a killer set, but because the way the sound goes, and I see this on other people's videos too. There's always one person that comments that like, man, I was with you. I don't know why they weren't. And it's like, like, I don't know where the audience is good. It's just, they weren't liked. Yeah. (laughs) This is how audio works. This is why it's good to have good audio. Yep. 
Definitely. But it's, uh, and everybody's some video connoisseur now where they're like, oh, the audio is so bad on this. Or, blah, 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 blah. Shut up. Oh, yeah. Shut up. You don't know what the hell you're talking I'm about. I'm not posting no one knows. shit anymore. How about that? Hey, take that, buttheads. And you're like, we don't know who you are. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to keep it that way based on my career and life choices. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, yeah, but I had fun in Washougal, is the point. <laughs> yeah, I'd never been there before, but it is uh, right along the old Columbia River there in the Washougal River and the little Washougal River, which they were telling me about. <laughs> yeah, it's hard because when you go to a town like that, and it's not as very small, it's by no means a small town. You know, it's it's got a good amount of people there, and it's right next to Vancouver. In Portland, yeah. Yeah, it's just hard when they're like, you should stay. And I'm like, I, I don't know. If you understand that we do this so much that I just long to be at home. That's kind of the way this works. This is the thing about small towns is that that's what they do, right? They just drink and get excited about stuff. They're not like, they're not consuming art the same way as if you're doing something in a bigger city. Like they're like, oh, we got to show these out of towners, like what it's like in Washougal, right? And so this happens all the time in smaller places. Like you'll do great, you'll have a fun show, whatever it is, even if it's small or whatever. And instead, because what you want them to do is come up and buy merch or follow you or whatever. Instead, they come up and go, can we get you guys some shots? Or yeah. do you want some of these drugs? I'm like, no, but you can buy a t-shirt. That would be helpful. You know, like I don't. That's their, their gift to you is to get you fucked up and it's like i don't i don't live in the woods for that reason i think like yeah i live in the woods to get away yeah this yeah. Th- th- there was a man that came up to me after the show and he was very nice and he made it abundantly clear that he couldn't buy a t-shirt because i only had xls and then he proceeded to sit there and talk to me for 10 minutes <laughs> about his life and i was like this is nice you know you're a nice person by by all means but i, I gotta th- this is my job right now is to try to sell this stuff i'm trying to remember who that was there's two dudes standing there and the one guy was talking to you for like a really long time yeah they want two x's yeah they wanted two x's and then they bought one of yours yes one did but the other guy was like oh you have two x's and i was like yeah i have one more do you want one and he's like no i'm like you so this whole thing you go about the two x i do have one yeah caught you in your lie yeah, it's a bummer because it, it's also a weird situation because it's no pressure to buy anything. But if you're not going to buy anything, then we could Ooh, talk for a yeah. bit. Then I don't know what, what you're expecting to get out of this relationship. Like a new buddy? Because I got a lot of buddies. You know, yeah. I, I don't mean to be a dick, but I just. I'm very popular. So I, I just I, I got I got a life to live, man. And if you're standing right here in front of the merch, then no one else is buying it because that happens at clubs like a crowded club show. And you get the one person that wants oh, to I talk to hate you. That. And, you're and like, I'm so bad at being like, move along. <laughs> yeah. And then eventually they'll be like, oh, I'm probably in the way. And you're like, yeah, like, yeah. but you were 20 minutes ago. Yeah. I, it's happened to me multiple times where I'm like, this fucking sucks. And I don't know how to, I've become a lot more of a dick. I was a real kind of ag i was a jerk today can i tell you about me being a jerk today yeah i was was over it i was working than you being a jerk we can i was on a call uh, for my work (laughs) and then a knock came on my door and it sat there and it lingered like they they were clearly on my porch like i heard the footsteps shuffle Mm -hmm. and i'm like well shit this might actually be someone and i and i had the call on hold anyway and i go to the front and it's just a guy trying to sell me construction shit like he's like i saw your windows and i'm like just bullshit and he started talking and I cut him off and I was like, hey, man, I don't mean to be a dick, but I want to call. Get, what are we doing here? And he was like, you want a car? And I'm like, sure. Just fucking what are work. we doing here? That's yeah. hilarious. Oh, my gosh. We had someone come to the door, too. What a weird day. Uh, and like knocked in that same thing where you can like tell that they're staying there. But also like we have one of those windows at the top of the door. Oh, yeah. Both doors. So when you walk, like they can see in, you know, like pretty easily. So oh, oh. I went and I was like, I got this because my whole family's sitting in the living room. But I go and they definitely have a clipboard. And I was like, all right, whatever. So I had to turn off the alarm. I go out there and they're like, hey, we're just, you know, it's for voters that w- we want to put what something about you can't evict people. I don't even know. Something about rent in Tacoma being on the ballot. And I was like, sure. And so I like write it down. They go, are there any other voters home? And I go, nope, not right now. <laughs> like I was just like, nope. 
let me just do it real quick. Get you out of here. Don't care. I have an email that I use for like, you know, stuff I don't Make shit, check. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, yep, get on out. And so it, which works, but I was like, hope you guys have fun, you know, and I get it. Like it would suck to be one of those, you know, I'm sure people aren't nice to them very often. So. Whoa. Yeah, the guy was just trying to sell me windows. And I'm like, hey, man, I didn't even mention that we rented. You know what I mean? There's no, it's just a whole thing. <laughs> but I, I just like, don't. Yeah, oh, we, we rent, so I can't do anything. Bye. That's my usual go to. That's a great excuse when that situation, if someone comes up asking about, like, usually it's like yard care. Yeah. Which already bums me out because I'm like, I'm on my lawn, dude. Are you just telling me it's a piece of shit? Is, and I'm a piece of shit? What are, yeah. what are you trying to do here? No, I've, I've run over landscaping cards when I'm mowing my own lawn and i'm like well this is disrespectful they litter so much it's insane i know i don't like this seems like a waste of paper and and we live on a busy street anyway so i get garbage in my yard all the time i don't need more of it so much garbage so much garbage move your shit i mean i would be happy to have some kid mow my lawn or whatever if i had more money yeah that's the key just give me more money Mm mm-hmm Everything would be fine if we had more money. That really is the funny part about solving this whole issue right now is the money issue. But hey, Monica, what if we just real quick positive spin why it's good to have random people knock on your door? Okay. So my first one is say you're lonely. (laughs) (laughs) I heard a, a story about an old lady that would call the fire department all the time. And they like knew it was her. And so she would just either talk to him on the phone or they'd come over and like hang out with her for a little bit. Dude, I, I have truckers that call regularly and they stay on the phone you. too long <laughs> because they don't, they, they, these people need people like that. And I'm like, you don't have a, a, a buddy to call or someone to text or a Facebook group to go in and just linger or lurk. Like, come on now. Know, people are lonely out here these days. You got to call. I mean, there's also, I thought I was a phone call person. And now the longer I live, the more I'm like, I don't think I'm a phone call person. No. But I'm also not a text person. I'm just not a phone person in general. Yeah. Just don't talk to me. No, I think it would be good if, you know, those days where you're like, you get to like 3 p.m., especially as a comic. And you're like, I haven't even talked out loud yet, like at all today. And so if someone comes to the door, then you can exercise your voice. You got to run bits on the person that comes to your door. That's kind of genius. I mean, I was not thinking that, but that's a different, you could do that. That would be good. That's something an open mic. Hey, why, sure. while I have you, um, let me. Let me just run something by you. Sure, quick. I'll sign your form if you listen to um, all the new stuff I wrote today. You know what? You're talking about my windows. I was showering in my bathroom and there was a spider there. And I just lead like? right into it. <laughs> roll right into roll it. Roll right into your material. Well, I mean, why would you do stuff that already worked? You don't know. Anyway. Yeah, um, I mean, it just goes just for the lols. Maybe that's know? it. And be like, yes, I will buy windows if you buy a t-shirt. <laughs> Other thing. Okay, I got another reason. This is kind of a stretch. You ready? Yeah. All right. Usually someone at your door gives you a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard or something, right? You yeah. just got yourself a fire starter in case there's the apocalypse. You know, okay. just fuel, it's fuel, it's fuel for fires. Sure. I mean, you don't have like a fire pit. It has to nope. be the apocalypse. No. Okay. Nope. It's just you got in this situation. You got nothing. You got a you got a, a business card for a landscaping business. Well, I understand. I just think it's interesting that you're starting a fire because of the apocalypse. Well, but it'll get cold in the apocalypse, probably. <laughs> It seems like it's going to be hot, but I don't know. Think so? No, I have no idea. I think it'll. Anyways, doesn't matter. It does you seem cold in of, all the zombie movies. It does. You reminded me of a very awkward experience I had in college just now by I saying like the, ap- the apocalypse. It. There was I was in a geology class, and my geology teacher's name I'll never forget. It was Kurt Wilkie, and he wore fly fishing shirts every day, which was mm-hmm. fucking sick. He was kind of a G, right? And <laughs> He was saying in the beginning of class, this is like class two, probably, of the semester. And he goes, so can anyone tell me real quick, like how uh, the earth started? And he's looking for the Big Bang. And before anyone can say anything, someone just goes, Jesus. (laughs) And then he stops and he's like, well, that's an opinion, I suppose. (laughs) It was just a really awkward fucking moment. (laughs) Oh, that's hilarious. And you saying that it was for some reason you saying it's going to be hot or cold. I'm like, that's a different opinion also. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. I don't know. 
I don't know either, but it was just really funny how he had to like juggle with it in, in college. Yeah, that is. I mean, that's a tough thing. How did the answer? Jesus. That would be weird too if he was like, yep. <laughs> Yeah, he Here did say something. This was before like climate change was like really in the narrative of world politics and like world culture. Mm -hmm. he, he said, We're actually due for an ice age before we're due for a heat wave. And I'm like, Oh Kurt, oh Kurt, if you could only see how 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 long how, how wrong that was in two thousand eight. Yeah. <laughs> due yeah, for an ice age. Oh god. Yeah, They're it was weird. Their motorcycles. They're starting their motorcycles across the street. Yeah. A, it's, you, would you own a motorcycle work? did i want a motorcycle would you own one if yeah. i was like monica here's a free motorcycle uh, i mean i guess maybe it would I'd be like the sell movie it. Wild if you Hawk. gave me a free motorcycle i'd probably sell it okay you can't sell it and you have to be a road comedian on a motorcycle would you do it absolutely not that sounds terrible and the only people i've ever known that had motorcycles and like rode them all the time all died so oh, on the motorcycle. So I'm very oh, like uh, anti-motorcycle. Yeah, it feels like. Okay, I changed my mind. You can sell the motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, you can sell well, this hypothetical motorcycle. I would sell it to someone I hate. Because then they probably sell die. What you want, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so dark and I'm so sorry, fun. That's fucked no, up I loved me. it. I loved it. You know, I'm here for. I, that's the wrong vibe, though, for the old. Hug life here. I would sell it to someone I felt was very responsible and would never mm -hmm. ride it. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. That's, that's the way to go. That's the way to go. I wonder, I think some of it has to do with like people who want to ride motorcycles are a little bit more risk takers, obviously. And so that yeah. adds to the danger of it. It's like you're kind of also doing crazy shit when you're on a motorcycle. I would agree with that but, you know. because most of the time people that ride motorcycles, you it's a stereotype of like the 40 year old business dad who's like looking for a thrill, you know, the yeah. guy that works at the insurance company or yeah, whatever. That's the Harley guy. And then there's like the crotch rocket dude is just like. Wants Instantly to, wants to be murdered. But then like, he's also, yeah, he's like driving crazy on it. I don't know. Anyways, I'm not going to overthink it, but I'm not going to overthink it either, but I just thought it was a good thought experiment here. Our neighbor, I believe, like rebuilt his engine or something, you know, like he worked on it for a long time and now he rides it to work in the morning. Problem is, he goes to work at 514 every morning and mm. I know because I look at the clock and <laughs> that's when he starts it and we have to keep our window open because it's hot. God, how weird would it be if you rebuilt a motorcycle and you made it yourself and you fixed the engine and then you died? It's like I built my own demise. Yeah, in for sure. Interesting. I think about how I thought about riding motorcycles and then I was like, the, the way I fall down and I'm accident prone, it just doesn't sound like a good idea. Well, they've always said that, like, it's not usually the drivers. It's that other people don't know how to drive around motorcycles, you know, like, mm, yeah. which I do think is true. But then also it's like, yeah, nothing's changing that, though. Like you. Yeah. So then you're not really in control no matter how good of a rider you are. One thing I do want is like a little like a motor scooter like a moped to go Ugh. get like groceries and stuff yeah like, we have a e, like a quick thing Brian a little e-bike did i tell you that yeah you got an e-bike yeah oh nice is it fun it's great i love it and so yeah i take it to the gas station all the time i want to get a basket for it oh yeah you gotta have a basket on your bike yeah you go you grab your snacks or beers or whatever you put them in there, or and then eat. you buzz on back mm -hmm. i love that it's good for hills yeah, that's the thing about my neighborhood. You've been here is to get to anywhere, you got to go up a hill. So the yeah. e-bike would be dope for the hill up and then you just ride it down, you know? Yeah, it's not. It's like a little one, too. It's not like because I when I go to work out every morning, there's a lot of the bigger e-bicycle, like you can tell. And that's for like older people who clearly need a little bit of help. Yeah, they're like essentially pretty small. Yeah. There's these ones in my neighborhood with like these really fat tires, like these road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tires. I see those a lot. Yeah. Those are expensive though. They're like 1800 bucks. I freaking crazy. Bet. I'm sure ours was expensive. We didn't buy it, obviously, but um, you. You yeah. Stole. <laughs> no, Aaron's parents gave it to us and it clearly has been used like a lot, like maybe <laughs> um, not irresponsibly, but you know, in interesting ways. Like it's the tires definitely sideways, and like we're missing some, some stuff on it. <laughs> I love Maybe that. there was a couple of accidents. You know, I will say it actually is really hard because the brake and the acceleration are 
basically on the same thing, you know, so when you can accidentally hit one of them pretty easily. Um, oh yeah. You gotta be careful. Yeah, definitely. I've, I stopped it one time on accident and almost fell off in front of it, but do you wear a helmet? No. Well, cause I don't have one. I would. I, uh, I know. It's me. Your safety dad mad at you that you're not wearing a helmet. I will say safety dad. I haven't taken it anywhere except for the gas station, which is a half a block away. So, okay. Well, if I'm we had gone, dis- other I'm places. not mad. I'm just disappointed in you. <laughs> okay. Does that hurt worse? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Monica, we caught up. We're good. I, I, I enjoy our conversations. And I, I think like- people should answer the door when someone comes. You think so? I think we so. Try. Too. We both did. And then maybe you'll feel good. You know, Mike doesn't get to be mean very often. So maybe made you feel a little bit powerful for being mean. It, today. it felt it felt OK. I felt bad. I it was just be like, decisive. Why, you know, why are you knocking on my door? I just don't like it when people bother me. I I'm feel gonna be like that old guy that yells at the lawn. Yeah. A, a lot of those moments, though, make me go, oh, I wish I was more assertive. You know, I wish I could stand up for myself better and be like, hey, no, we're not going to you because I do feel bad in those moments. So either you could practice that or you could make someone's day by being, you know, actually answering the door and being nice to them for once. Yeah. Or you can just buy, you know, $10,000 windows or whatever from this random person that walks by your house. Just for- I just remember specifically a guy selling, you know, it was very popular for a while for to sell magazine subscriptions at the door. Oh, yeah. And it was always people like in recovery or that had been like something, you know, they were trying to get back on their feet, essentially. And I remember a guy coming to the door when I was at the place I went for like daycare. because It was like a home daycare. And he had like, he was missing an eye. I don't think he had any teeth because, and then he like told us, you know, it was like from meth, like meth use. And then the eye was because he was throwing, (laughs) it was just like, oh, that's probably from drug use too, or some crazy story. Right. And he's like, no, I was throwing a pocket knife at a tree and like the handle (laughs) hit it and it bounced off and got him in the face, like got him in the eye. What? Yeah. (laughs) Fuck. But I remember that so distinctly about opening the door and actually talking to someone. <laughs> what? What? Like I can see his face in my mind, mostly his eye. Did he I, have an eye patch or just no eye? No, it was, it was just... just there. Well, it was his eyeball was still there, but it was like all white and like I don't oh, know. That's... It was like clearly didn't like stab him in the eye. Oh my gosh, it's it like you were in a scared eye. straight program on yeah, accident. It was that's what, what it, it seemed like. like. But we talked for a long time, and I was like, I don't know why we're. Hey, you know, that's nice, I guess. They're churchy people, so I think. <laughs> that's got to be like a weird story to be like, how did you lose your eye? I was throwing a pocket knife against a tree, and he just knows yeah. he's like, it's right, just not like, going to. He's like, don't do that. At some point, he did go, don't do that. And we're like, yeah. <laughs> What a weird Obviously. thing to end on, but I love this. Sorry, yeah, that's good. So yeah, you never know, or it could be an interesting story if you answer the door. <laughs> you could meet a one-eyed man who got had in a, in a pocket knife yeah. accident. Well, there well, you Monica, go. Is there anything you want to say to the listener before we go? <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs>